All right, so welcome to the screencast for the moisture content of coal lab. Um, for this lab, before we talk about what we're doing uh, in the lab and the procedures, let's talk a little bit about coal first of all. So we've been talking about fossil fuels in class, and coal is just one of the many fossil fuels we've talked about. Um, coal is a, is a solid uh, piece of fossil fuel that is formed mostly from uh, the remains of trees, ferns, and other plant materials that have been preserved anywhere from 280 million to 360 million years ago. So what happened back then, uh, ancient Earth, uh, under anaerobic conditions or with uh, conditions without oxygen, when things, when plant material would die, um, under anaerobic conditions, peat would form. Now, peat by itself can burn for a pretty long period of time, and all peat is is partially decomposed organic matter. Over time, if the condi geologic conditions are right, the peat is compressed between two sediment layers and it becomes more dense. After a while, it turns from peat into what we call lignite. Uh, now, over more time, with more compression between the two sediment layers, we get what we formally call coal. We have subbituminous coal and bituminous coal. And then, uh, under even uh, more time and more pressure, the, uh, the, the densest type of coal is anthracite coal. So as you can imagine, uh, the more energy per unit volume is found in the anthracite coal and goes back as we go towards peat. So here's just another picture. We have peat is the less dense, just the remaining plant materials. And with pressure, heat, and time, it gets more and more dense. Uh, uh, from lignite to subbituminous to bituminous to anthracite coal. But what we're going to be doing in lab, uh, we are going to be trying to determine the moisture content of coal. Um, so to do this, we need a couple of things. First, what we need uh, is we need samples of all the different types of coal. So this is a piece of anthracite coal, but you will be getting a sample of peat, lignite, bituminous, and anthracite coal. You will also be using, they call for a Bunsen burner. We're not going to be using a Bunsen burner. We are going to be using uh, this benzenomatic propane tank and torch um, as our Bunsen burner. Um, you will also get some, uh, we'll also have some tongs to hold the crucible. And then you will have a crucible ring stand and clay triangles. Let's look at that apparatus. So here's that apparatus. The cup is called the crucible. This is the clay triangle. The crucible will rest within the clay triangle, and the whole thing will rest on the ring stand. This ring on the ring stand is adjustable. You can make it go up higher or down lower. We also have a digital scale in which to weigh the, uh, the coal in the crucible before and after we heat it up. So the procedure, first thing you're going to do is mass the crucible. Second thing you're going to do is you're going to use the scale to determine the mass of a small piece of coal. So here's our small piece of coal. You'll start off with the peat, uh, peat coal uh, for, your first, for your first sample. Uh, then you will set the, uh, the, the peat coal inside the crucible. And then you will set the crucible on the clay triangle and put it on the ring stand. So let me shrink this down. Move this over. So you're going to set it up just like this. Now, you'll probably have to set it up pretty high in the stand uh, because this benzenomatic propane tank takes uh, up a lot of space. So you will then take the, uh, the, the propane tank and torch, um, and you'll set it up uh, with a good amount of distance between the propane and the, uh, uh, and the crucible. And then what you will do is uh, I will come around and I will uh, light the propane tank for you. So once it's lit, whoosh, it's going to be on for a little while. And what you're really trying to do is you're just trying to heat up the crucible. You're not trying to um, light the coal on fire. If the crucible is too close to this concentrated flame, uh, then it will uh, the coal will eventually start to become on fire, and that is not what we want. We want there to either can be smoke, uh, we want it to heat it up, but we don't want it to be on fire. Whoops, I forgot to put the coal in there. So the coal will be in there. All right, so while all this is going on, of course, of course, of course, you'll be wearing your safety goggles at all times. You might say, well, Mr. Gray, I'm not even close to the flame. Once the lab starts, you will be wearing safety goggles, even if it's uncomfortable, uh, even if you're not by the flame. Failure to do so will result in a zero on the lab and uh, further disciplinary action. So please wear your goggles like this fine scientist is doing right here. 
Um, so once it's uh, being heated, uh, you will heat it for four, you'll time four minutes. After four minutes, you will turn the torch off, and you will remove the torch, uh, place it away from the crucible. You will let the crucible stand for five minutes before you remove it with the tongs, and then you will, uh, you will be weighing it. So uh, after you allow the crucible to cool, uh, you will determine the mass of the crucible with a dried piece of peat coal. You will subtract the mass of the dried coal from the mass of the crucible, and you will put the answer in the data table under mass of dry coal. You will use the formula in the lab sheet to, uh, to calculate the percentage of water in the coal. Uh, you'll repeat steps five through seven with each of the other types of coal and record it in the data table. This will be written up in your, uh, in your lab notebook, and this is due on the 31st, which is a week from Friday. So you have plenty of time to work on this. Uh, just a couple of things to reiterate before I sign off. One is that you need to wear your goggles at all times, at all times. Uh, another is to allow the crucible to cool for five minutes before you, uh, before you move it. And never, ever touch a heated crucible with your hands. Use the tongs provided. Uh, I will be lighting the torches. Uh, so if you are waiting for me, just wait patiently, and I will come around and, and light it momentarily. And last but not least, uh, any kind of horseplay for this lab will not be tolerated. Remember back to your lab safety contracts. Each and every one of you has signed that contract. And this is probably one of the first labs that we have where you, where you we really have to pay attention to the safety aspects uh, uh, that, that go with this type of lab and using flame. Um, so any sort of horseplay, you won't get any kind of warning. You'll be asked to sit down, you will get a zero and receive further disciplinary action. Um, should be a fun lab. Uh, shouldn't take the entire class time. Hopefully it will be done and you can come in here and start working on the lab report. So I'm um, looking forward to it. I had a lot of fun with this last year and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun this year too. Let me know if you have any questions. Email me tonight, and uh, I will try to respond to those before class starts tomorrow. See you later.